Hey there everybody and welcome back. For those of you that have been using AppGyver before and you aren't quite sure of the difference between variables, parameters, things of that nature, stay tuned. I'm going to be covering the basics in this video. Now for those of you who are not familiar with AppGyver, it's a platform you can use to make mobile applications for free without using code whatsoever. But if you are a little bit curious about what that entails, check out their pricing page. As of now, it's showing it's free for indie developers making 10 million or less in revenue. So it's a great resource for people looking to get started. Now, before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out the channel for new content. So let's go ahead and jump in. We are in AppGyver's main screen here. We have a basic application built, and we're just going to go to the data tab. Now, this is the tab I'll reference in a little bit about the different data resources. So I just want to make sure that everyone's aware that this is different than the variables section here. So if we flip this little switch, you'll see we have app variables page variables, page parameters, data variables, and translation variables. Now we are not going to be covering translation variables in this video. So to get started with app variables, you'll see when we hover over it, it's variables that can be read and written on any page in the app. So the idea is if you have information you want to save, let's just say on one page, like a value, someone enters their phone number, but you want it to be accessible elsewhere. You could add an app variable and we'll just call it phone and we'll click save. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here and we're going to type, we're just going to call this phone and we'll delete this option here. So now we want this to be the pay or we want this to basically be that app variable. So we will choose the phone variable. So we went to select binding type data and variables app variable and we'll choose phone and save. Now what we'll do to show you how this basically goes across to a new page, we'll just create a new page called phone and we'll save it. And this value here, we will make the data variable app variable phone and save. And then we can honestly just delete this altogether. So now we have this empty page again. We just need to find a way to get to that page really quickly. So we'll drop in a button go to open page and we will proceed to change this to the only other page that we have. So now that we've kind of got that established, let's save it and open up our preview here. So when we click on this button, you'll see we have this page with nothing on it. So now if we type in 111-111-1111 and click on this button, this value has been updated to the page variable or the app variable, I apologize. But now if we type in a couple A's and click the button, that variable has been updated. So the button is not saving the variable. The way that this has been set up, the variable is updated the second you type in any information whatsoever. But you can access this variable from another page within the application. So it's great if you need to have something saved where you can access elsewhere. So that covers the basics for your app variables. Now we're going to go to page variables. It's very similar. You'll see they're variables that can be read and written on a page. So we already have a sample variable here. So we're going to swap this out and we're just going to call this sample to show you how the page variable would work. We're going to go to the variable, go back to select binding type, data and variables, and we'll choose a page variable. And now we'll choose the sample variable. Now this is going to be stored on the page. So once we navigate away, we're not going to be able to access that information. So the idea here is let's see if we can move this button up here and we're going to change the value for this new text that I just brought in. We'll change this to a page variable and we'll choose sample and we will click save. So now we're going to go over here and you'll see as we type, it is immediately pushing the information here. So this is what it was doing with the app variable. However, this is only accessible on the page. So now when we click this button, you'll see there's nothing here. And when we navigate back, the information's gone. So that's the basics for the page variables, but you can save them. And for those of you who think, okay, well, what would be the purpose? You're saving it on this page for anything you may be doing on this page. So 
you could save the variable as a page variable and then have it send somewhere else by clicking a button. There are tons of options, so you just have to be a little creative with how you think about this. So that covers page variables. Let's cover page parameters next. So it's a read-only argument with values passed when navigating to a page. So we're going to try to add a parameter, and we'll just call this parameter, and we'll click Save. Now we'll go back here, and we're going to have to go to the new page because we're basically passing the value to the new page. So what we can do here is we actually need to create the parameter on this page. You'll see the parameter did not carry over. So we're just going to call this parameter. And then what we're going to do is we're going to choose where we want the parameter to show up. So we'll click on this and we can actually change the content here. So we'll go back to data and variables and we can go to page parameter and choose the parameter that we just basically created. Now we can click save and we can go back to our empty page and we can change the value here. So here's where it gets interesting because you have the ability to update, let's just say your page variable here, so we can keep it as save. Or what you can do if you're interested would be to pass this on to that page parameter. So what we would do here is we would choose this button and you have a couple of options. But if we wanna to go to a new page, I'll show you what this looks like. So you'll see when we go to navigate, so we'll do this from scratch. So we're gonna to go to drag open page over as the page parameters can get a little confusing. Now when we choose open page and we click on phone, which is the other page we had set up, you'll see there's a page parameter here. So now we would need to choose what this value is going to be. So you have a couple of options as I'm sure you could imagine, but for this I'm just going to choose the page variable and we'll choose this sample. So what we're doing is we're saying the value for this is going to be our page variable. So whatever the user types in here is now our page variable. But I want that page variable to be displayed on the next page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a button and it's going to open a page and that page is going to have a page parameter which we've already created which is specific to the page and we're just saying all right you know what I want you to send the value for the page variable where I'm at now to the page parameter on the next page. So consider it like your way of passing a variable from one page to an, the other, at least in this specific example. So we're going to click save here and we'll jump over here and we'll type in test. You'll see that it's still showing our page variable here. And then we're going to click on this button and you'll see over here, it now shows test. Now, when we go back, this is gone. And when we move forward, it is also gone. So the idea there is, Again, the text here is stored as the page variable. When you click the button, it opens the new page. On that new page, there is a page parameter, and we've decided to tell the system we want that page parameter to be the page variable from this page. So you can think of your page variable as your variable for the page, your app variable as your variable for the app, and your page parameter, your way of transitioning or sending information between pages. Then you have your data variable. So this is a little bit of a lengthy process to walk through. So if you remember earlier, I showed you this data tab here. If you click on this, you have the ability to add data resources. So you can do on-device storage, REST API integration, Google Firebase, Marketplace Search. So the idea here is you have data resources and connectors if you're interested. And you can set or receive information outside of the application. So I'm not going to cover this in detail because I actually have a series on my channel called how to create a social or sharing app for free without code. You can reference the how to create a complex forum video in that channel to walk through how to create a data variable. Uh, this is going to be using the REST API integration. But the idea is if you wanted this information to be sent somewhere, let's just say a database like Firebase, which is relatively easy to set up, you can have this information be sent to Firebase and either displayed here in the application, or if you just wanted users to send in information, for example, maybe you wanted to have a forum post, like 
the application that I have for my channel. I made a video of walking through how I've set that up. You can check out that video if you would like, but I have a forum post on my application. But there's tons of other ways to use this. So this is a way for your application to communicate with a third party database and send and receive information. So those are the basics to the variable types. Again, the data variable will be the one that's going to require likely an internet connection, depending on what you have set up. The rest of them are going to be mainly for just a local application. So you should be able to run these offline. So I hope that covered the basics to variables. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below. I will link to that how to create a social or sharing app playlist in the description, and I will see you all in the next video.